Hi everybody, so today what I thought we might go through is just the different dif differentiation techniques that are out there. Okay, so differentiation, basically the, two, the three different techniques that you have are the chain rule, okay, the chain rule, um, then you have the product rule, product rule, and finally you have something known as the quotient rule. Quotient rule. So, what you need to do is, in your exam, you won't actually be asked to, you know, use the chain rule to blah, 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 do this, figure this out, because um, they will assume that you can recognize when to use it. So, I really recommend that you know basically what you're looking for, okay? So, the chain rule, the way I remember every time is that the chain rule is only to do with powers, okay? And it's not to do with any multiplication of, constant, of um, variables together. So what I mean by that is, if in the example of y equals to something like x plus 5 to the power of a half, if you want to differentiate that, you use the chain rule. If you want to differentiate something like this, square root of x minus 8 or something, that can still be brought back up. It can still be expressed as a single power thing, so minus 1 on 2, all right? That you use the chain rule. You can use the chain rule for things that you can't be bothered expanding, okay? So 9. I mean, you could use a binomial theorem to expand that, but who can be bothered, okay? So basically, your chain rule is when you have one single power, okay? And it doesn't matter what the formula in here is. Um, it can be log, it can be whatever, but you use the chain rule for um, these kind of cases. Okay, so how is that different to your product rule? Well, basically your product rule is a product. It's a multiplication. It's a multiplication of variables. So, for instance, if you can't be bothered, um, for example, expanding two sets of brackets together. So, say you have y equals to x plus 2 to the power of 8 and x minus 1 to the power of 9. And you can't be bothered expanding that out because it is hard work. What you can do is you can use the product rule because in between these two brackets you have a multiplication. And so you're using, you're making a product out of two brackets. Okay, a product rule can sometimes be deceiving, things like this, which are really short. That can be a product rule. Things like this are also cases of product rules. Sometimes it's not very clear that they're multiplying. But you just have to look for two functions multiplying and then you know that you have a product rule. Okay. <coughs> the last one is the quotient rule. To be able to recognize the quotient rule, you have to make sure that two variables, two variables are dividing. <coughs> are dividing. So you'll find that um, you need to have, for example, x plus 2, something like that to use the quotient rule, okay? Because one of these variables is dividing by the other. Um, you do not use the quotient rule for things like this. Okay, for things like that, that could be expressed as a chain rule. Because you can then put this as, you know, x, x squared plus 5 x to the minus 1. Okay, so um, just keep in mind that you have to recognize which rule you're using and in the next tutorial what we'll go through is actually how to use these different rules and examples of them. Okay, so I hope you learned something and I hope that helps you in a little bit of methods. Okay, catch you later. Bye.